this session properly now and uh, welcome to everyone joining this webinar winning with discount i'm david gordon i'm a research director here based in london at uh, edge by essential uh, regular webinar viewers might uh, recognize a, a slight change in uh, color and branding here uh, edge by essential in the bottom left hand corner uh, let me just uh, briefly give you a little bit of uh, reasoning behind that. Um, Planet Retail, RNG, as uh, you might have uh, viewed our webinars in the past, uh, is part of Essential Group, and Essential has been uh, building a portfolio of uh, retail and digital inside brands in recent years. So Planet Retail and RNG coming together in 2015, joined by One Click Retail in 2016, Clavis Insight in 2017, and Brandview in 2018. Uh, so that's the, the journey that uh, we've been on as a, as a group, and all those brands have now come together uh, as one business, and that business is Edge by Essential. Um, we're a, a combined data insight and advisory solution leading in e-commerce analysis. So we now have Edge Market Share, which was uh, formerly powered by, by One Click Retail, Edge Digital Shelf, uh, driven by Clavis Insight, Edge Price and Promotions, driven by Brandview, and of course, Edge Retail Insight, which is uh, formerly Planet Retail RNG. Uh, I'm very much part of uh, Edge Retail Insight, and that's uh, where this webinar uh, is uh, coming from today. But just so that you're all aware, you know, future sort of communications uh, will all be around our Edge positioning. Uh, and I hope that's given a little bit of uh, clarity and insight as to uh, where we uh, have been and where we're, we're heading to. But back to today, and uh, let's have uh, a look at uh, the agenda. I think it's a good time to be involved in discount or to be looking at discount retail. Uh, it's a growth channel for sure. There's plenty of developments going on within it. And uh, if you're a brand, if you're a supplier looking at this market, then I think increasingly there's more ways to win in this channel. So I want to build a picture over the next 25 minutes that gives you maybe some of the tools and some of the, the knowledge to help you succeed in this particular channel. So we'll look at uh, discounting context uh, and just understanding the performance and the size of the opportunity that the discount market, the discount channel offers. We'll then look at that changing landscape and how discounters are uh, developing in a way that's gonna keep them relevant and uh, in, uh, in, in place for years to come. And then thirdly, we'll think about how brands can uh, win with discount, how they can align uh, strategies and their agenda uh, to that discount channel. Uh, I'll round up at the end and uh, we may have an opportunity for a little bit of Q&A, so do send your questions in uh, on, the, uh, on the portal. Um, let's uh, start with discount in, in context and uh, understand the performance of the discount channel and the opportunity. Uh, this is uh, a data chart uh, driven by the Edge Retail Insight database, and uh, it pulls together all uh, our uh, information from our tracking of over 2,000 retailers, well over 10,000 banners. We uh, aggregate it all together, and uh, we've pulled the, the data here by channel. I think the first thing to say here is that um, retailers fall within the discount channel uh, if they are typically limited assortment retailers, uh, typically uh, offering a high proportion of private label, uh, underpinned, of course, by a value proposition and low cost operations. So that's typically how we would define those operating in the discount channel. And that's how we aggregate them into this uh, particular uh, definition. Uh, but I think you can see from this chart, but not the biggest channel, of course, because supermarkets and hyperstores are by far uh, bigger than the discount channel. Uh, but in terms of growth, in terms of opportunity, in terms of that potential, uh, then the discount channel, the compound annual growth rate uh, that we're projecting for the next five years through to 2023 is quite attractive, 6%. Uh, and that is clearly uh, more significant than, say, the supermarket channel or the hyperstores channel. Uh, I, I mean, broadly, typically, uh, smaller stores are uh, going to be better served, I think, by growth prospects in the years ahead, as clearly consumers are changing their shopping behaviors, shopping a little more often, a little more frequently, uh, and uh, perhaps smaller basket sizes in that respect. So proximity store-based outlets are going to do generally better in the years ahead in terms of growth potential than those larger format stores. And discount, I think, will certainly gain some benefit from that, as you can see from that growth rate. 
If we take a look at what's behind uh, that, those figures, then uh, the chart on the left uh, shows uh, the leading five operators in the discount channel. And by far, Aldi and Lidl are driving the strongest uh, growth in the in the marketplace. Uh, they are uh, outstripping uh, the, the nearest uh, discount channel competitor, uh, almost sort of four times there. And so Aldi and Lidl, recognized here as Schwartz Group, um, uh, we will touch on uh, in the next slide. But just to say that uh, in the top five, you've also got the mass merchandise at US-based retailers of Dollar General and Dollar Tree, very significant in the US market. And then Edeka in, in fifth place, German-based German, German -based operator, really heading up a long, long tail of uh, discount and variety store uh, operators uh, across Europe and, and beyond. The chart on the, the right-hand side really just shows that uh, Europe is very much the home of the discount channel, uh, a significant size in terms of uh, its uh, revenues there. And uh, it really has been, uh, I guess, the discount, uh, the home of discount since the 1960s uh, with uh, Germany and Central Europe uh, building a very much a, a strong penetration of discount retailers that we'll see in a couple of slides time. Uh, but I think it's fair to say when you look at the other regions in that chart on the right hand side, that uh, you know, North America, Latin, they're all starting to build traction in terms of the discount channel. And uh, I think that uh, bodes well for the future in terms of opportunities for brands and suppliers. But I said we'd have a, a closer look at Aldi and Lidl. Uh, they're the ones that tend to grab the headlines because they're by far the biggest operators in the channel. Certainly when brands, suppliers are looking at working with a discount channel, they look at the opportunities uh, with these two retailers in mind. And I think Lidl has clearly grabbed uh, a lot of headlines uh, most recently. Uh, it's uh, well publicized entrance into the US market uh, last year uh, really put Lidl uh, sort of front and center in terms of publicity. Uh, and whilst that has not perhaps gone off to the, the, the greatest of starts, it takes clearly an, an operator some time to adapt and uh, develop its proposition for that for, for each local market. Uh, you know, Lidl has done an incredible job really across Europe um, in terms of disrupting the marketplace in Europe, expanding rapidly, opening stores aggressively, developing its store network to well over 10,000 stores. Uh, across almost 28 markets in Europe. So uh, they've done a great job in Europe, but largely their sales are still driven from that one region. Whereas I think Aldi deserves quite a lot of credit. And by Aldi, I'm talking about both Aldi Nord and Aldi Sud. Uh, they operate in discrete regions uh, around uh, Europe and uh, more globally. But Aldi as, a, as an entity really describes uh, de deserves some credit for the way in which uh, they have gone about building a global business. Europe is clearly very significant for Aldi in terms of the uh, sort of middle uh, blue gray bar there. But uh, look at the way in which Aldi Sud has developed its business in the US in terms of the top red bar there, uh, really growing uh, quite significantly from a, a slow start in the 1970s. In the last decade, it's really pushed on very quickly there and is now pushing on through 2000 stores in the US. And that's really made uh, a big difference to the overall uh, aggregated revenues there. Uh, and also uh, on the other side of the globe, uh, pushing uh, very successfully into Australia, disrupting the status quo that was the Australian grocery market. And again, building a sizable business in that particular region. Uh, and of course, um, you know, I'll go on to mention it later, but uh, starting to dip a toe in the water in terms of uh, China as well. So, you know, Aldi, I think, deserves a lot of credit for what it's achieved in recent years. And that um, ethos that has served it so well, you know, uh, value, simplicity, aggressive scale, uh, has really helped it get to this position uh, to be uh, the channel's leading discount retailer. Now, I mentioned earlier that Europe was by far the, the biggest market for discount uh, retail. Uh, and so you might think, well, is there still an opportunity in Europe? And I think this chart here is, is an interesting way to look at it. Uh, on uh, the scale here is a percentage of the food retail market, and it's looking at the proportion of discount channel sales as a percentage of the overall food retail market in every uh, country in Europe. And uh, you can see there's a huge variety there. 
um, in terms of Germany, very heavily penetrated in terms of discount retail, over 40%. And then, uh, you know, other markets pretty strong in terms of Austria, Poland, both over 30%. But I think the point I'd make here is that there are many European markets, major European economies, where actually the discount share is still relatively low. Uh, and actually below, let's say, a Western European average of 18%. And I think that just shows the potential, really, of the d discount channel still has in, uh, in a developed economy such as Europe. With markets like the UK at, uh, say, only just under 15% uh, discount penetration, Spain, Italy, France at 10% uh, or under. And uh, you know, I think that just highlights, as I say, uh, the potential. So if I look at our database in a little more detail, and I've just um, had uh, a quick look across some markets, just pulled out some markets that I think you'd, you'd find of interest uh, in terms of potential, uh, looking at both sales added uh, in terms of uh, physical euros that, uh, uh, that, that will be generated over the next five years, and as well as the compound annual growth rates. Um, I should note that I've, I've left Germany off this. Uh, the German discount market is so big that even a small uh, sort of growth rate generates uh, sales added of, of quite some number. I think on the note there, uh, you know, a small uh, compound annual growth rate of just under 2% will generate almost 9 billion euros of added sales over five years. So putting the favorite to one side, so ignoring Germany as that largest market, I think these are the markets that uh, you know, brands and suppliers should be quite interested in. Italy, uh, looking from right to left, uh, is uh, of interest because Aldi has just moved into that market this year. Uh, so that's going to drive the discount channel in Italy. Uh, Poland is quite a unique market. They have a market leader in Poland, Bedronka, uh, which is a discount retailer, actually leading the market, which is quite unusual. So the population as a whole are more predisposed to uh, the discount channel and good growth is forecast there. France, just a huge, dis a huge market anyway. So a small uh, amount of growth there will generate a, a reasonable sales return. And Lidl is still pushing hard in France. Uh, looking to add another 300 stores or so over the next uh, three or four years. Uh, but I think the real uh, interesting story, uh, the one to pull out is the United Kingdom. And uh, it has been a, dis a decade of discount for the UK. Um, and, uh, you know, there's plenty more where that's uh, uh, to come from. Uh, you know, our, our projections based on our database uh, showing an extra 12 billion uh, euros worth of sales to be added. And that's driven by the likes of Aldi uh, and Lidl. Uh, Aldi seeking 1,200 stores by 2025, Lidl 1,000 stores by 2023. Even the market leader in the UK has felt the need to uh, develop its own discount format. And that was launched just a few months ago uh, called Jax. Uh, again, further details are on our, our portal for insight into that uh, format. And then variety discounters as well are an important part of the market with, uh, and not just in the UK, but more generally, but with operators such as B&M uh, adding 600 stores already, adding 40 to 50 stores per annum. So there's plenty uh, to go at in markets like the UK, but also uh, further afield as well. And... Um, I think that's why uh, the discount channel should be of interest to, to brands and suppliers alike. So having given a little bit of context, looked at the uh, size of the opportunity, looked at the potential there, let's think a little bit about the changing landscape and uh, about how developments are shaping up within the discount channel. And um, I want to do this by um, looking at what we call our, our sort of winning strategies. I think we recognize that the landscape is changing. There are uh, lots of things, uh, whether it's consumer expectations, whether it's a fragmentation, fragmentation of supply chains, whether it's just intense in, uh, competition intensifying. Um, but there are lots of developments that mean discount also must develop and evolve and remain relevant in this very uh, changeable landscape. And when we talk about uh, developments, we tend to talk about 
uh, winning strategies. We talk about four main things that retail and brands, to that matter, uh, must align behind, uh, must uh, seek their leadership, their investment, their resources uh, to align behind these four winning strategies. And I just want to consider discount developments uh, within this context or through this lens of four winning strategies. So to take uh, store of the future first and look at the developments that are happening there, um, if uh, we think I, the, the main sort of point that I would raise here is the amount of development uh, happening within the discount channel around assortment and expansion of assortment. You look at those pictures on the left hand side of a discount store now, and this is an example of Lidl, uh, you know, that is a very different store environment now with a much bigger assortment than you would have found 10 years ago. And uh, Lidl will be continuing to push that assortment much further uh, from uh, under 2,000 SKUs up to a core range of, uh, of, of towards 2,500 SKUs uh, and you know, pushing more into specialist ranges like organics, chilled, fresh, uh, free from type products. So again, opportunities opening up there for more brands, for more suppliers to become part of that uh, assortment. But we also see missions becoming more relevant to the discount channel. As discounters open stores in different location types, then we see uh, an opportunity for uh, sort of convenience and impulse type missions, which creates sort of new product and pack type uh, variant opportunities. And then the picture just in the top right there, I think kind of neatly sums up the um, the, the way in which uh, the, the store the discount store of the future is repositioning itself um, from, uh, and, and to quote uh, the leader price example here, low prices are not sufficient anymore. Old style discounting is dead. So really bringing together uh, the, the physical store envir environment, enhancing that with a much broader assortment is really helping discount sort of seek out a broader appeal. Uh, and as well in stores of the discount store of the future, we're seeing a greater brand presence come to the fore. And I pick on Aldi Nord here. Aldi Nord is perhaps the more conservative of the, the, the two Aldi entities, but even Aldi Nord is uh, pushing hard here in terms of uh, creating a broader appeal, a broader destination by listing more brands. And we've got uh, data here actually from Aldi Nord that they released this year and uh, showing the uh, proportion of own brands within the core range available in each market. And uh, the, the, the consequence is that uh, the, as the percentage of own brand actually drops, then the penetration of branded goods is actually increasing. And the group overall on the right hand side there is uh, showing 86% now proportion of private label. Uh, meaning that, uh, and that's down from 93% in two years, meaning that brands uh, are actually taking a much, much stronger position now within uh, the, the, uh, the, the discount store. And examples there from the uh, recent leaflet campaign showing some uh, prominent brands uh, well featured within the weekly flyers. Uh, in terms of uh, e-commerce and digital ecosystems, if we just think about that for a moment, I mean, I, the, the first thing to say here for the discount channel is that you know, this is a challenge for the discount channel. E-commerce adds cost and complexity to any retail operation, and that really undermines the discount philosophy of uh, a low-cost, simplified operation. Uh, however, uh, you know, we talk about the landscape changing, and discount will uh, evolve uh, to embrace this type of uh, approach. Uh, it's fair to say that discounters are followers rather than leaders, but they will gradually build their capabilities as we see in these examples here. And uh, you know, to take a little as a, an obvious example, uh, it is uh, recruiting uh, many, many e-commerce specialists, many technical experts. It is building up its little digital international division, which controls e-commerce. And as it already has uh, e-commerce operations in 11 markets, admittedly, many of those markets are around sort of uh, travel and photo sort of uh, retail. But in terms of online shops, it's already in four markets expanding to its fifth. And uh, that capability will continue to develop uh, in, in general merchandise at the moment, 
uh, but we'll talk potentially about food and beverage later. And on the right hand side, just an example of Aldi building its e-commerce operations by partnering with Alibaba's Tmall and uh, dipping a toe in the water in the Chinese market, uh, listing brands uh, for Chinese consumers um, with the potential, of course, that this may at some point translate into a physical store network in the future. And, uh, you know, a further examples here of just that growing presence that we're seeing of the discount channel in terms of e-commerce, Aldi's UK Wines and Spirits transactional site, Penny Discount launching a website this year, uh, Dollar General, of course, quite prominent in terms of online sales in the US. Uh, again, mostly general merchandise, shipping, of course, not rapid fulfillment, but typically within two to five working days. And of course, Lidl with its online sites and four markets uh, already, again, selling largely general merchandise items, food and beverage, not yet part of that repertoire. Um, so for suppliers, really, it's just a watch out. It's a kind of uh, gaining, gaining an awareness that uh, e-commerce is going to be part of the proposition going forward. And that discount, you know, once it builds its capability, um, will become uh, a, a greater uh, player in the market in the longer term. And the third uh, area that I wanted to look at was supply chain and fulfillment, because of course part of the challenge around e-commerce is the cost of that last mile fulfillment. But here actually we see big developments, big changes taking place. Uh, and actually it's to the US that we look in terms of the way in which the discount channel is exploring new fulfillment options. So Aldi's partnership, Aldi US, its partnership with Instacart has now been rolled out to all stores in the US. Now this allows um, Aldi shoppers uh, to be able to shop on the Instacart portal and actually receive deliveries uh, to their front door, to their homes. Uh, there's clear benefit for Aldi in this type of operation in that it's low cost and low complexity for it as a business. The downside is that, of course, uh, the interaction, the exchange is with uh, Instacart and the shopper. So Aldi not necessarily getting that data getting that um, engagement with a shopper. But at the moment, it seems to be a feasible solution that's allowing Aldi to at least compete uh, with the likes of Walmart and Target and Kroger uh, on their home turf. Lidl has a similar arrangement with Shipped. And in Europe, um, there's not as much progress as we see in the US, but there are some early, early examples of uh, Lidl, for example, beginning to develop some home fulfillment, partnering with, uh, on a very low level basis, uh, a, a Buy Me app in Dublin. So operating some trials in Dublin and Lidl in Belgium operating uh, a, a sort of cycling home fulfillment service with an option on 400 products to be delivered fairly rapidly to people's homes. So early, early sort of trials going on in Europe, which suggests that there is far, far more to come. Uh, and of course, you know, discount retail relies on scale, it relies on footfall, it relies on customer traffic and some interesting partnerships uh, with people like Aldi and Bedronka partnering with postal services and Amazon there to actually operate locker services, again, bringing people to those stores. So some interesting developments going on in terms of fulfillment. But of course, you know, the discount channel is all about um, the supply chain. It relies on its supply chain to uh, underpin its value ethos. It needs the lowest cost supply chain in order to offer the sort of prices and values that it does to shoppers. And herein lies a bit of a challenge for the discount channel. And I use Aldi here as a, an example of some of the developments at play. Uh, to, to lose a, a price position would be unthinkable for a discount uh, operator and a, particularly somebody like Aldi who uh, in Europe is uh, clearly faced with intensifying competition. It's faced with uh, increasingly competitors forging buying alliances and leveraging their scale. So uh, Aldi, uh, I think quite rightly, is actually looking at ways in which it can uh, offset that competition and complexity by achieving more supply chain collaboration. And it's doing that in two ways, partly um, you know, within itself in terms of Aldi Nord, looking at uh, bundling a brand promotions and a brand buying, for example, across borders. And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't Aldi Nord in Germany try and use that buying power to leverage some of its uh, to leverage into some of its smaller markets? But I think more significantly, 
It's the opportunity for Aldi Sud and Aldi Nord to combine and collaborate in a way that we've not seen before. And this is where uh, you may get some joint purchasing and there's talk of this within fresh produce, for example. But the example on the left-hand side uh, shows some progress already being made where uh, they are already bundling um, volumes on private label. And uh, on this example of toilet paper, for example, the Aldi Nord uh, private label solo uh, has been discontinued and Aldi Sud's uh, coquette brand will be available in all uh, Aldi Sud and Aldi Nord stores. So I think uh, you know, interesting developments there, absolutely the, the right path to take in terms of leveraging scale in order to compete and to maintain that price advantage. And for suppliers, I think a really interesting watch out, uh, particularly for private label suppliers, uh, but for brands more generally, uh, just a recognition that it's a tough market out there and discounters are beginning to act and think differently in order to compete. And of course, uh, the final uh, sort of uh, strategy that I just want to look at in terms of developments is around shopper engagement and retention. Uh, in terms of uh, shopper engagement, first and foremost, uh, you know, uh, the discounters win loyalty every day through price and value. That is the uh, reason for being. That is what they focus on. That underpins their whole proposition. Without price and value, then they don't have that differentiation. So price and value is absolutely vital here. But beyond that, and beyond the leaflets and the advertising that you see, uh, you know the discount channel is developing some some interesting activities around loyalty, uh, such as short-term sort of um, collection programs. They're developing content-led marketing programs, as we see through Audi Inspired in Germany, and of course, celebrity endorsements as well. Again, just reaching out and connecting with consumers in a way that we've perhaps not seen too much uh, in the past. And of course, uh, shopper engagement and retention will be increasingly data-driven and personalized in the future. And again, interesting early steps by the discount channel in this way. Uh, so, you know, uh, Lidl's uh, personalized um, AI chatbot uh, helping customers select wines, for example, and recommend wines. Uh, and then Dollar General in the US, of course, with shop and scan apps and uh, personal and uh, digital coupons. I think it's just a sign of things to come and much more uh, from the discount channel to go forward with there. And uh, for suppliers, again, an opportunity, I think, to perhaps engage with the discount channel in ways that may not have been totally feasible um, not too long ago. So uh, having looked at the developments in the discount channel, I just want to think now a little bit about how brands and suppliers might seek to engage with discounters on that uh, agenda. And uh, just a, a few examples before we uh, come up to time here. Um, but in terms of, again, using our structure of future store, uh, you know, thinking about what brands must do in order to uh, you know, achieve uh, uh, a sort of cut through in the discount uh, environment. Now, first and foremost, on the right hand side, you know, what uh, what brands have to deliver is something that private label cannot in the discount environment. So global strength or something that's incredibly regionally relevant uh, are important criteria to be successful in the discount channel. And uh, it's interesting when Tesco launched the new uh, JAX format, discount format the other month, uh, you know, the, there are quite a few brands listed within that format, and the brand had to outsell the private label equivalent by at least five times to merit a listing. So that gives a sense as to just how strong a brand needs to be in the discount channel. But also, uh, a brand, once it's in there, once it's on shelf, it has to cut through in what I'd describe as a sea of private label. And uh, you know, some good examples there as to how brands are doing that on shelf. Uh, extra free or exclusive added value product always helps. High visibility mixed cases, bold and differentiated packaging, uh, or new product signposting are all good examples of how brands can achieve that cut through on shelf. Uh, and of course, um, I spoke earlier about shopper driven missions and how that was becoming more of a part of the discount uh, assortment. And I like this example from uh, the beers, wines and spirits section. Uh, the you know, discount channel, Aldi and Lidl in particular, have been keen to open up space on 
craft beer, for example. And in this example from Lidl, over 50% of the range of that in craft beer is, uh, is branded. Uh, likewise, convenience and impulse shop emissions open up new sort of opportunities for different packs and product types and variants, uh, Coca-Cola and Red Bull there as an example. And of course, uh, short-term promotions are always uh, a way in which brands, uh, maybe not necessarily with the volume to land a core uh, range option, uh, can be, uh, can be uh, used within a discount channel. Uh, particularly relevant for food and beverage brands, particularly uh, relevant as well for household uh, brands there. You see stacked and uh, bulk display, freestanding display units also very popular within uh, certain uh, discount retailers. And uh, going beyond uh, sort of store assortment and thinking about supply chain and fulfillment, just some examples here of how brands are using efficient solutions to really play to that requirement that discounters have to optimize in-store replenishment and shelf space. Uh, and whether it's freestanding display units like this one here from Reckitt Benkiza, a simple one-touch solution there, or whether it's mixed cases uh, if where you've got multiple variants within one case in what is uh, you know, typically a health and beauty section here where there's not a lot of shelf space. So to make uh, the most of that shelf space and that listing, the mixed cases of those smaller SKU types are actually pretty important to actually uh, land uh, listings within discounters. And then, of course, uh, you know, as well as considering mixed cases, think also about the case structure and the rate of sale and how well positioned products are within that case. So supply chain and thinking through those uh, sort of granular details are really quite important in order to sort of win in that discount channel. E-commerce, I mentioned earlier, is not a, a major uh, sort of issue currently, or brands do not get a lot of exposure because the discount channel is not necessarily playing heavily here, but it will do in the future. And I think for now, for brands and suppliers, it's about watching out as to what's happening. And brands are visible on e-commerce websites at the moment with the discount retailers, and whether it's online catalogs, like you see here on the left-hand side, not transactional, but just a catalog, or whether brands are being used to, uh, and to really give some credibility to the category, as you see on the right-hand side, or whether brands are being used to sort of communicate promotional messages, as you see on the bottom right. Uh, I think suppliers and brands just need an awareness of how their products are presented online uh, through the discount channel and how at some point in the future uh, there will be a, a greater uh, relevance here uh, as, uh, as, as the discount channel becomes uh, more heavily uh, focused on that particular way of selling. And uh, finally, uh, shopper engagement and retention. And uh, whilst I said earlier that uh, you know the future is all about data-driven and personalised uh, insights, uh, you know you can see brands really working with discounters here to reach out directly to customers in the store. And uh, some nice examples here from Mars on the right-hand side, doing three things really in terms of you know creating an added value product. Uh, creating a, a freestanding display unit that's uh, highly visible, uh, but also then coordinating that with uh, weekly uh, leaflet advertising as well. Uh, Colgate Palmolive on the left-hand side, uh, already a strong on-shelf presence uh, with uh, some core range, uh, but using freestanding display units to uh, cross-sell and to bring in products that perhaps don't have the same high volume, but have perhaps stronger opportunities in terms of uh, higher sales value and higher margin. Uh, so again, some nice examples there as to how brands uh, across discounters are working uh, to promote and to reach out to the customer. So uh, I've got an eye on time and uh, I will be wrapping this up uh, in the next uh, minute or so. Just want to kind of bring it all together after having looked at the size of the opportunity, after having looked at the various discount developments that are at play through that lens of our winning strategies, and also just looking at how brands are working to align to that agenda. Um, I'd bring it all together by just drawing your attention to this slide here. 
Uh, so in terms of our future store, you know, the focus on the a greater assortment as discount is broadening its appeal as a brand, as a supplier, think about how you can cut through in that private label environment on e-commerce and digital ecosystems. Again, you know, be aware of that growing capability and online presence that the discount channel is building. Uh, the followers, not leaders, but they will build and scale quickly. So as a brand, have that awareness of how your product is presented. In terms of supply chain and fulfillment, a lot happening here, um, both in terms of home fulfillment, but also in terms of how discount needs to um, collaborate and to uh, be able to develop a supply chain that maintains its low cost price position. And again, for brands, it's important that uh, there are efficient solutions to optimize um, replenishment and shelf space. And finally, shopper engagement and retention. Price and value will, of course, always be the most significant element here. Uh, but it's uh, interesting to see the uh, different types of uh, engagement activity that the discount channel is beginning to build. And uh, for brands, there may be a way to play a part in that uh, additional activity. But certainly right now, in store, brands have a, a good opportunity to reach out directly and influence that in-store shopper. So uh, with me virtually done here, my final points would be channel strength. Uh, I said at the beginning, it's a good place, it's a good time to be thinking about discount and to be looking at discount because the channel is strong. Uh, there are some clear market opportunities. Uh, it is, of course, a changing landscape. Uh, there are many factors at play, and discount must also develop and evolve in order to stay relevant. And we see it doing that. And I hope I gave you many examples today as to how discounters are building their strategies for the future around assortment, around e-commerce, around supply chain costs and engagement. And for brands, um, again, I provided a few examples there as to how brands are also aligning and winning um, through those uh, various strategies. So um, that is uh, my presentation complete. Thank you for listening. Thank you for dialing in. Um, there are uh, a few things to, uh, to say. Um, I, I'm fairly close to time, so I won't actually take any questions now, but I will, for those that submitted questions, come back directly to you. Um, but for those uh, subscribers that already have access to our portal, then uh, there is plenty more on the discount channel available. Service, uh, we recently published our global discount report, which you can find there. Uh, we've also got recently published editions of retailer reports on Aldi and Lidl. So please, uh, if you're a subscriber, uh, look to those. Um, and I think in that sense, you have my email address on the screen in front of you. If there's any further questions, please get in touch. But uh, at uh, just over 40 minutes, I will say thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed the webinar and look out for future mailings. We will, of course, mail you with the content from this presentation uh, in the next 24 hours. So thank you. Uh, good afternoon.